Let's go to Pleasant. Athi Thomas Pahashka throwing 14 meters 87. And it is the Circu Athi Jaime Gonzalez Alorda who is chasing that marker 1487. And it will be the Czech Republic man who takes all three spikes. Gonzalez Alorda. His throw at 13 meters 25. And we go back to group A. And you can see the results on your screen from that first round for both Group A and Group B. Yeah, Mustafa Kuru winning the event yesterday. The Enker athletes very, very strong in the field. And this is where they gained a lot of their points yesterday, which gave them such a huge lead over the teams behind them in that second semi-final. It looked like very unlikely that anyone would come near them in the hunt, and in the end, no one really did. Kuru setting the marker then. 15 meters 62 for the Turkish man. And it will be the Dane Multibank who has to follow that up. Well, the rain is still coming down, not as heavily as it was earlier here in Castillon. And that circle is still looking very slippery, but it is a white flag for the Dane. Twelve meters ninety. For Sparta, which sees Enka take all three spikes in the second head to head of Group A, as we jump back to Group B. And Jaime Gonzalez Alora, Spanish athlete, makes his way down to go and pick up his shot put. Personal best of 50 meters and three set this season. And he's up against Eric Aston. Aspen representing Oslo and Arcasus. So it'll be some way off Gonzalez Alorda's personal best, that throw. Looks like it will be around the 13 meter mark where it's come up as 12 meters 47. So that is within reach of Eric Aspen. Personal best of 13 meters 78. And the mark he's chasing, 12 meters 47.
laid down by the Spaniard. Stamps on his towel there. Makes his way into the circle. And this could be quite close between the Spaniard and the Norwegian. Well, Eric Anderson. 11.87, so a win for the Spanish team there in this head-to-head. -head. They take the three spikes. And like we've had in all the rounds before, the athletes allowed one member of coaching staff into with them into the field of play. The athletes have... They only get one opportunity to do so, and so it's very important for them to have their coaching staff with them, have that support in the infield to help them deal with the pressure of being in the spotlight. This is the only event going on in the stadium at this moment. There's only ever one event going on at one time, really allowing us to shine a spotlight on these young athletes they have all the focus on them. They have all the support of the crowd, their teammates. And it is Motobank back into the circle. Of Sparta. The Dane with a personal best, 13, 48. And that throw will be 40 centimeters short, 13.08 for Motorbank to 13.08. Is the mark being eyed up by Dylan Claydon of Blackheath and Bromley. Blackheath and Bromley so dominant in so many events in their first semi-final yesterday and it looks like they'll have a bit of a challenge on their hands today but that is a big big throw from Dylan Claydon a personal best of 15.95 that could be close that could be very close instead those markers weren't pulled tight so it hit the marker for 16 meters but you can see there it's very wiggly um, so not not as true to true to the lines as we'd hope. 15 meters 92 for Dylan Claydon, just three centimeters shy of his personal best. In horrible conditions here in Castellón, it's not ideal conditions at all for these shot putters. But Dylan Claydon stepping up and laying down on a, a brilliant marker there. He takes the three spikes. So on to our final head-to-head. -head. Eric Aspen, the Norwegian, in his Norwegian strip there, stepping up first. Trying to find any dry towel he can. This is what we're talking about when we say it's, it's far from ideal conditions for these shot putters. Trying to keep anything dry down on the infield is, is a challenge. So he'll be setting the marker from Thomas Prohashka to follow. As you can see, the rain coming down slightly stronger now. And it's a no throw for Aspen. So this then falls into the hands of Thomas Prohashka. All he has to do is get a clean throw in and he'll take the three spikes. which should be easy enough for the athlete from the Czech Republic, personal best of 18.24. And he gets his, clean, gets his clean throw in there. 
it's not a far throw and he shakes his leg there and looks slightly uncomfortable so I wonder whether something didn't quite go to plan well it's a clean throw it's a safe throw for Prohashka 11 meters 64 So we will be back with the shot put after we head back to the track. And there are the results. There will be who is going head to head, facing off for the points in this final round. But before that, the shot putters get a little break while we draw our attention to the 100 metre hurdles for the women. Kansu Nime Sayan, you can see there in the anchor vest. One to watch here, fastest personal best. Jodie Self in your picture at the minute. Black Keith and Bromley. She goes in lane two. And there's the athlete to watch. Kansu Nime Sayan, personal best of 13.68. Victory Janske, she did very, very well yesterday in her semi-final. The pleasant athlete with the face paint in the colors of the club, Circu. And um, Paula Jordan go in lane five. Annika Halbo of Sparta, another one to watch, personal best of 13.81. She goes in lane six. And Kasia Ruth of Oslo and Arkasus is in lane seven. But there's the athlete who will be wanting to further Enka's dominance in the competition so far. She has the personal best to do it, but there's challenging conditions out there, especially for our hurdlers. Blackheath and Bromley in lane two, Enka in lane three, AK's go to Pleasant go in lane four, Suku in lane five, Sparta in lane six, and Oslo and Arcasus in lane seven, eyes on lane three and lane six. So they're away cleanly and it is indeed a brilliant start for the young Turkish athlete who is absolutely flying over the barriers at the minute. She is being challenged on the outside though by Jody Self from Blackheath and Bromley. And it is gonna be so, so close on the line. It looks like Jody Self just got there dipping on the line. That is a brilliant result for Jody Self from Blackheath and Bromley. A big smile on the youngster's face. Well, Cyan was going incredibly well, but was matched stride for stride through those closing stages of that race by the Blackheath and Bromley athlete. Well, the time there. 14.37, Jody Self with a personal best of 14.24. And in these conditions, that is an absolutely excellent run from the British youngster. Victory Janssen going well. She's a tall Danish uh, Czech Repu figure from the Czech Republic, but look at the way that Jody Self managed to dip on the line and it was so, so close behind her. Victory Anska has been confirmed in third place. Not much between them at all, but a brilliant result for Blackheath and Bromley, who haven't necessarily had the start to the competition that they'd won in comparison to yesterday. So there is confirmation of the results from the 100 metre hurdles for the women. 12 points going to Blackheath and Bromley. They will tre treasure those points. So Blackheath and Bromley now with 18 points. They sit in third. Just two points 
behind the leading two teams, Enka and AK Skoda Pleasant. Remember, one point equals a 0 0.33 time differential in the hunt. So three points equals just under a second. So for our fifth place playoff and the chance to take four points home to your team, Eric Aspen, Vozo and Arcasus in his Norwegian kit steps into the circle. He'll be laying the marker down for Malta Bank. Fourteen meters thirty eight for Eric Aspen. A big, big personal best for the Norwegian. Well, he'll be absolutely chuffed with that. What can Malta Bank do? Well, that look that is shy of the fourteen meter mark. So not only Will Aspen take home the personal best? He'll also take home the four points for his Norwegian team. Multibank, his throw being measured at 30 metres 50. So fifth place for Oslo and Arcasus. And we move up on to our second playoff for third place. Jaime Gonzalez Alorda, the Spaniard, will be first to step into the circle. He'll be laying down the marker for the Brit, Dylan Claydon. So eight points, the maximum to be gained. Six points, the minimum that either of these athletes will be taking back to their teams. Still early days in the competition. Berwick's at the top of the table. The two teams at the top currently tied on points. Blackheath and Bromley only two points behind them. So Gonzalez Alorda steps up. Well, that will be around maybe just shy of the 12 metre mark. We'll wait for confirmation. Eleven metres eighty for Jaime Gonzalez Alorda. So that is what Dylan Clayden will be looking to better. Eight points at stake, which go very nicely to Blackheath and Bromley in their quest to stay as close to the top two as possible. Dylan Clayden, he's thrown 1592 already in this competition. He has a personal best of 15.95. And where will this go? Well, that is unfortunate for Dylan Clayden. He had a big opportunity there, but the shot just going wide of the area. And he does certainly look quite disappointed with that. He'll still take six points home for his team, but the door was left open there. 11 metres 80, a more than achievable throw for the Blackheath and Bromley youngster who on this occasion faults in the eight points go to Circu when they necessarily didn't think that they'd get them. So this is exactly what DNA is about. You don't have to have the the furthest, the quickest, the longest personal best. 
is whether you can cope under the pressure of these tactical battles, the spotlight on these athletes. The anchor athlete there. And then on your screens now, Tomasz Prohaszka of AK Skoda Pleasant. The Czech athlete into the circle. Well, that is a big throw from Tomasz Prohaszka in these conditions. Well over 16 metres, he has a personal best of 18.24. 16.54 for Thomas Prohaska, and that has laid down a marker for Mustafa F.A. Kuru, who has to follow that now. Well, this will require a big, big throw from the Enker athlete. He's capable of it. An 18.15 man on his best day. What's he got today? Let's out a shout. It's another huge throw. Well, well, well. It's over 16 metres. Has it gone as far as 16.54? Has it gone further? Whoa, 16.63. Well, Enka take all 12 points. Wow, what a huge throw for the Enka athlete. After an incredible marker laid down by the, the Czech Republic athlete representing AK Skoda Pleasant, Tomasz Prohaska, that initial throw, well, that was definitely a challenge. And a challenge that the Enker athlete has risen to exceptionally. Well, Enker so, so dominant yesterday, and we are starting to see that emerge again today. Confirmation on your screens of the results from the shot put 12 points. Going to Enka, 10 to Skoda Pleasant. Surku taking a surprise eight points there. And we'll see how that affects the results for the team standings. So Enka moving two points clear of AK Skoda Pleasant. Blackheath and Bromley in third. They're starting to trail slightly. I'm sure they'll want to see that gap shortened as much as it can be. They've got an opportunity to do that now with Luke Dronfield in the 110 metre hurdles for the men. And there is your start list on the screen. Ayatollah Demir in lane two, the Enkarathi. He sees his team out in front at the moment. He'll be looking to extend their lead, and there he is on your screen now, Ayatollah Demir, personal best of 13.96, representing Enka. Their closest rivals, Thomas Koza, representing AK Skoda Pleasant, just to the side of the, the team that are currently out in front. The Spaniard, Carlos Dorado, goes in lane four. Moldebank, who we've just seen in the shot put, he steps up in the 110 meter hurdles. Nicholas Baranyi Eriksson, another one to watch, 14.49, his personal best set this season. And Luke Dronfield, who competed over both the 400 meter hurdles and the 110 yesterday. He's back for Blackheath and Bromley. He goes in lane seven. So the man with the fastest personal best by quite some margin. Alatullah Demir goes in lane two. But under these conditions, we saw it in the women's 100 meter hurdles. It doesn't always go the way of the favorite based off personal bests. Thomas Koza to the side of him. One to watch, and Barani Eriksson in lane six as well. So the athletes are up and away cleanly. 
and it is a very, very good run from the anchor athlete going in lane two. He's starting to pull away from the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete to the side of him. And it is Alatula Demir who takes the win from Thomas Koza. And unfortunately, the Sparta athlete, Malta Bank, just crossing the line now after clattering into one of the hurdles. But another 12 points then from Enka. What is it going to take to stop this Turkish side? Dominant once again through the early stages of this competition. We saw how far they can pull away if they're given the opportunity to. And the quality of these teams currently behind them, in particular, AK Skoda Pleasant and Blackheath and Bromley, they'll be wanting to close that gap as quickly as they can. They won't want to see Enka get away. Fourteen point four eight the time given to Demir. The confirmation of those times on your screen. Anchor, Pleasant and Blackheath and Bromley taking the top three spots. And that's looking how things will play out through the course of the day. They are the three teams who are looking the strongest at the moment. Sparta would expect to be up there as well. And then the standings after four events, you can see on your screen now. Enka out in front, followed by Case Go to Pleasant and Blackheath and Bromley. Starting to close that gap slightly. Eight points separate Blackheath and Bromley from AK Go to Pleasant. So right now the Turkish team, Enka Sports Club, is leading the competition just as they did yesterday in their match. And now we advance to the next event and we are getting prepared for the long jump. And this works just like the shot put. We are first going to have this dual previous phase. The athletes are going to fight to be the ones maybe fighting for the highest score possible, the 12 points, for the medium score, the 8 points, or for the lowest score, the 4 or two points it's still raining a little bit so it's not an easy competition for any of the athletes here but that just makes more amazing this dynamic new athletics so we go back to the field and it is to the turn of the women in the long jump And there you can see the structuring of this event, the same as we have seen. In our field events so far, and it is the Enkrathi, Elif Aydin, who steps up first. She'll be laying down the marker for Lucid of Surku. And the circle athlete watches on. So first head-to-head -head in Group A for the women's long jump. And it is Iodin laying down the marker. 
She had a bit of room on the board there. But under these conditions, the athletes probably not wanting to take too many risks. Yeah, just slightly early on the board. Five meters 22 for Lucid. Well, Sid now steps up. Five meters 22, the distance for Alif Ayodin. So five meters 22, the mark that needs to be bettered to take all three spikes in this first. Group A, head to head. Now I'll wait to see if that will be enough. It looks round, maybe just shy of the five meter mark. Lucid with well, a personal best of 5.22. And yeah, that looks like it would just be shy of the five meter mark. So expect the points and the spikes to go to Enka, and they do indeed. Four meters 88 for Circu. Now, as we move on to Group B, Kaja Carlson Brown currently on the runway for Ozo and Arcasus. And I'm joined in the commentary box now by Frank Carreras of the Gibraltar Athletics Federation. Frank, thank you so much for joining us. You're also the president of the Small States Athletics Association. And you're out here having a look at this European DNA Under-20 Clubs competition and soaking up the atmosphere. Exactly. Um, I mean, the competition is fantastic. I think the athletes are having a really good time competing in this event. Um, but what's important is to understand what DNA is all about. Uh, DNA is a new concept in athletics and certainly not uh, envisaged or or, or planned to take over from the traditional competition. I mean, that, that is, is, is paramount that we continue with that type of competition. But it's, it's uh, a, a new format of athletics that will encourage a development of clubs, of teams. Um, it's a team event. And, and I think that um, it, it, it is doable um, uh, for, for this type of athletics to uh, to be promoted within each federation, within clubs in that federation. You could also have international events uh, between federations, especially in the small states where we have um, lack of competition in the form of team events, and, and this is something that can be adapted very easily uh, within the small federations. Absolutely. I'll just bring everyone up to speed with this long jump competition. Kazakh Carlson Brown laying down the marker of 4 meters 94, and we've just seen Claudia Baker jump, and that did look like a big jump from the Blackheath and Bromley athlete. Has she gone over five meters? Well, it looks like it will be close. We'll just wait for confirmation. 5.02 for Claudia Baker. A big wave and a big smile from the Blackheath and Bromley athlete who will take all three spikes from that first Group B head to head. And I think that's really important what you, me what you mentioned, Frank, about we're not in competition and we're not trying to take over from the traditional form of athletics and replace that and those competitions. I see it in a similar fashion to triathlon, how Super League triathlon has absolutely thrived and yet still has the traditional form of triathlon. And the athletes take something different. They see the tactical side, like in triathlon, in the Super League triathlon in particular, those different tactical nuances is something the athletes enjoy doing and they, they enjoy having fun and competing as a team. Like we saw earlier, I'm sure you saw the scenes with the French team and the Irish teams down dancing on the podium. Yeah, yeah. They look like they were having such a good time. Exactly. I mean, and that is the intention of the competition. Um, you, I mean, the competition, you could have different tiers. Uh, uh, the lower tier where athletes don't make it to the elite uh, 
a, st a standard and 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 you can have different tiers what we are trying to introduce in Gibraltar is having inter school competition in the in this uh, uh, format um, I mean, it will attract a lot of young kids to the sports of athletics if it's done through schools. Uh, we are aiming to, to work very closely, and we are working very closely now with middle schools in Gibraltar. And hopefully we, we will have uh, competitions in this format um, at different ages within middle schools. And, and I think it's something that uh, will go down well. Um, the aim, obviously, is to, to bring more spectators and interest in our sport. I mean, nowadays, uh, uh, international competitions uh, take uh, anything between six and eight hours in two sessions, uh, daily sessions. And, and the concept of this uh, uh, new, new type of athletics is to have a competition within a, a span of two, two and a half hours. Team competitions, which is very popular on TV, um, normally take between two and two and a half hours. And that is the aim to bring back uh, those fans um, who get bored after after uh, three or four hours of competition? So, and and this is continuous competition. When you're watching one event, and then seconds later, there's another one on. And so, so I think the concept is fantastic. Uh, for the spectator and for the athletes themselves as well. Absolutely. We'll touch more on that in just a second as we get confirmation of the distance jump by Betty Marie Jensen of Sparta. So her distance of 5.47 betters that of the Spanish athlete who jumped before her, only 4.96. So the three spikes go to Sparta in our second Group A head-to-head. -head. And I think this is a prime example of what we're talking about now, Frank, when you mentioned one event at a time. And now these athletes, especially in the field, and we see so often field events, just through timing and scheduling, often be hidden away, especially at junior meets. And for these athletes to have the floor and have the spotlight on them is so important, especially for growing the sport, because it's encouraging athletes, spectators, they see maybe the long jump, they see maybe the, the shot put or the high jump, and they think, oh, I hadn't thought about that. I'd just seen the focus on the track, and you're going to encourage more people to come into the sport from a field point of view. Exactly, and, and there is no uh, competition or event uh, being held um, uh, with others. I mean, you, you, there's one event, and then seconds later, yeah, there's another event, and then you go back to that event. So, so the spectators are really entertained. And, and the athletes, as you said, we are focused on, on one event at a time, so we focus on the athletes uh, taking part in that event. I think, I think it's fantastic. I, I mean, we saw earlier um, uh, other teams really enjoying uh, the competition, and, and, and this is something that will develop into uh, something of, of, of interest. To, to our, our, we, we want to involve our grassroots in both at... Uh, at the small states level and in Djibouti in particular, uh, I think it's a very good concept to attract uh, the younger athletes and, and that is our aim really. Absolutely, I don't think I've seen so many young athletes having so much fun at an event before as we, as we did earlier on when we saw you know, the French team was celebrating like they'd won the whole thing and <laughs> they were really exactly. having the time of their lives and that's, that yeah. should be encouraged, you know. The, yeah. Obviously there's the team competition but the bond between the Irish team and the French team was incredible to see and to see them out there celebrating together yeah. was brilliant as we bring you back up to speed with this second head-to-head -head in Group B. It was a big jump for Claudia Baker for the Blackheath and Bromley athlete but outdone by seven centimetres by Katerina Samakova who jumped over six metres yesterday. We had a coach in the commentary box earlier saying how proud he was, the team manager. She's more than capable of jumping over six metres, as we saw yesterday, but the condition's not ideal out there at the minute. As we go back to our final head-to-head -head in Group A. And it provides something different for the athletes, doesn't it? There's a lot of pressure, but not just for the athletes. We mentioned, we've spoken to coaches as well who've said it provides something different for the coaches to think about. So the whole concept is is really exciting just because of the way it makes athletes think differently about the style of racing and, and the possibilities within the sport yeah exactly and i mean many of these athletes won't make it uh, to the very very top 
and and I mean this is probably the best uh, competition that uh, we can have for for second or third tier athletes and I mean I mean they spend hours and hours a day a week a month of training and we need to give them competition give something back to them and this is ideal for those athletes who who perhaps can't make it to the very top I mean the competition is open to, to all to the elite athletes and and to the lesser um, athletes but I think the competition is very wide and varied and 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 the good thing is that you can have different events um, if if you want to have field events uh, as a priority over track events I mean it's very flexible in that respect absolutely and definitely looking at it from a British perspective I know if this was around when I was growing up through the sport, this would have kept me in the sport and kept me competing in the sport uh, for a lot longer to have those things to aim for as an athlete that was never going to make it to the highest level of competition. Exactly. Still gives you some form of international competition to aim for, which is absolutely brilliant. And we can I mean, see... Com competition for athletes uh, is paramount in their mm. development. I absolutely. Mean, they, they will not develop unless they, you give them top class competition. And this is exactly what we're doing here at the European Under-20 Clubs DNA event in Castel. You've just seen the Enkarathi Aydin jump. She's chasing the marker of Betty Marie Jensen, who has laid down a, one of the biggest jumps of the competition so far, 5 metres 86. And unfortunately, the Enkarathi hasn't quite done enough to get there, 5 metres 37. So... The three spikes go to the Sparta athlete. Well, Frank, I will let you get on with the rest of the day, let you go out and enjoy watching and soaking up the atmosphere, and I hope to see you over in Gibraltar for one of these I, events at some point in the future. Please come and visit us whenever you can. Absolutely. Frank, thank you so much for your thank time. You. Thank you very much. So, Katerina Samakova. Jumped over six metres yesterday. And that looks like it'll be slightly further than her first head-to-head -head jump. Receives a high five from the coach there. And that will be an improvement on her first head-to-head. 5 metres 73 for the Skoda Pleasant athlete. She's up against Kaza Carlson Brown in this third and final head to head of the women's long jump. And the Norwegian makes her way down the runway. Good placement on the board. But she will be shy of the distance set by Katarina Smakova. Five metres and three centimetres for the Oslo and Arcasus athlete in our final head to head. So we go back to the track now for the 800 metres for the women, and then we'll be back with a long jump for the head-to-heads for the points, the final playoffs. So there are the results and who will be going head to head with each other. Sparta versus Pleasant for the first place and 12 points. Enka will be going up against Blackheath and Bromley for the opportunity to gain a maximum of eight points. And then Circu will be competing for the fifth place playoff and there are the start lists on your screen for the 800 meters for the women
Aike Fidanoglu goes in lane seven. Second at the European Under-18 Championships, over 1,500 metres. Morgan Squibb there did a brilliant job leading Blackheath and Bromley out in the hunt yesterday. She looks very, very happy with the cheers from her team there. Anna Maria Sajak goes in lane five for Oslo and Arkasus. Machen Lutzen of Sparta Athletic goes in lane four. Itza Arnel of Suraku in lane three. And Lucy Kovechkova goes in lane two. So Asia Finnadoglu goes in lane seven. She's got the fastest personal best in this field. An incredibly good athlete over the 1500 meters, so slightly shorter for her. Morgan Squibb as well has had a really interesting and diverse season. She's raced a lot of steeplechase, she's raced a lot of longer events, but she did very, very well yesterday over the 600 metres, so she has got a good turn of speed about her, and she's the athlete who is currently just nudging ahead of the anchor athlete. And it will be those two who go forward, take the break, and they are sharing the lane at the moment. As things start to slow down slightly, just a little bit of a tussle for, for position as they go around this bottom bend for the first time. Fidanoglu, well, into the lead now. I wouldn't be surprised if she supplies a bit of a similar tactic to what we saw in the B final earlier today. She's got the fastest personal best by some way, but she'll probably save it for a later kick. Still very grouped together, slightly more grouped together than we saw in the B final. Also a slightly quicker 400 metres. They've gone through in 67 seconds. The pace initially being pushed by Fidanoglu and Morgan Squibb. And, well, these are the two who are starting to pull away from the rest of the field now. Squibb absolutely stuck to the heels of Fidanoglu, the European under-18 silver medalist last year. And Morgan Squibb looks like she's trying to launch an attack here. She's moved round the outside. And these two are absolutely battling it out with 150 metres to go. Has Fidanoglu got enough left in her to see this one out? Morgan Squibb trying to hang on here. Fidanoglu in the lead. Enka currently taking the 12 points. And she starts to pull away from the Black Heath and Bromley athlete. And it will be the European under-18 silver medalist who has shown her strength there. Her handshake between her and Morgan Squibb. Blackheath and Bromley will take 10 points. The 12 points to Enka, who have been so, so dominant so far. It's going to take something very special to stop them. So the athletes just going around now, congratulating each other. These 800 metres have been so, so exciting. They haven't been the quickest, even though this is the quickest 800 metres that we have seen in this competition by some way. Two minutes, 12 seconds, 0.49, the winning time. And we knew it was going to be slightly quicker, the pace they went through 400 metres. We've seen it be quite pedestrian in some of the more tactical races. But a dominant win in the end for Fidanoglu, just moving away from Morgan Squibb, who 
put up a brilliant fight. And there are the times, confirmation of the times and the points. Once again, Enke, Sparta, Blackheath and Bromley fighting it out. Sparta picking up some much needed points to try and close the gap. But here's Enke now pulling away. AK Skoda Pleasant just four points ahead of Blackheath and Bromley. And we go back to the long jump for the final round. And I'm joined on commentary by Cassia Ruth, who we saw in the hurdles. Cassia, how did you find it out there today? It's very, very damp, isn't it? And so it's yeah. not ideal conditions no. for running. It was a tough day today. So uh, it didn't go as I wanted it to go, but uh, it's always fun to be here. And it's a team event, isn't it? So even if you don't get your own personal performance or the personal performance that you'd have wanted, you know, you're still out there contributing to the greater working of the team, which, yeah. is, which is more important in this event, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's fantastic to be a part of a team. Uh, it's like uh, a really good uh, vibe and when you can vote for each other and everyone wants each other to do well. So it's uh, a great concept. Absolutely. So the Circo athlete, Lucid, is the first to jump. She sets down the marker for your teammate. Yeah. Kaja Carlson Brown of the Norwegian team Oslo and Arkasus. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> She had some big jumps yesterday. So the distance for the Spanish athlete, four meters 87. So this is well within the ability of Carlson Brown, we'd think. So we hope so. We'd hope so, we, we would indeed. She's had some big performances over the past two days and she is currently in the playoff Four, four, point, four points and fifth place. Well, slightly short on the board there. But that does look like she has done enough from that angle. It looks like it will be around maybe just over the five meter mark. She just needs to better 487 to collect the four points and she has done indeed. It is indeed just over five meters, five meters and two centimeters for the Norwegian athlete. Just having a word there with the coach. You can look back at her jump. How exciting is it for you as a traditional, you as a, a track athlete, as a runner? How, how nice is it to see your, your teammates who sometimes get hidden away in the field, having an opportunity to shine and being in the spotlight? Yeah, it's great. It's great to see your teammates uh, perform good and uh, you want them to uh, yeah, do good results and be happy for them. Absolutely. So it's great to look at. <laughs> and Carlson Brown, they're just having a word with the coach. They're allowed in the infield as we see Claudia Baker for Blackheath and Bromley. She's had some big performances today. And she's laying down the marker. The Iodin of Enka will have to follow. Enka currently leading the way in the point standings. Five meters and nine for Claudia Baker. So Iodin will be wanting to better that. And you're used to, as a, as a hurdler, having a lot of pressure on you and having the, you know, the pressure to perform. And you only get one chance to perform, yeah. don't you? How nice is it to see the, the roles reversed a little bit and your, your <laughs> track compatriots feeling the same kind of pressure that you do because they only have one opportunity to shine? Yeah, I know, like, I'm a hepatlete. Uh, so I know how it is to, like, have uh, several attempts. So I know... It must be difficult for them to only have one because of the playing. Like, yeah, it's uh, very much that's going to uh, work in like one attempt. So the eight points go to Enka. 
a jump of 5 metres 27. But it has been interesting to see how the traditional, more field-focused athletes adapt to yeah. that pressure and how they perform under it. Not just the pressure of having just the one jump, but also being in the spotlight, being the only event in the stadium, on the live stream, the only thing going on at once. Yeah. No, I think it's great that the technical uh, um, events also get like uh, much attention as like the sprints and the running. Absolutely, it's been brilliant to see and we've seen some incredible performances and some of our most exciting performances over the course of the, the two days have been in the field events. Yeah. Oh, I love the concept. Katarina Samakova, one of the athletes who jumped, well, the athlete who jumped over six metres yesterday. I was talking to her coach and he said how they made the decision after she jumped six metres in her head-to-head -head just to let her go, say, off you go, push the boundaries. We know you're confident and off you go. So they, that was a risk that they assessed and thought this is something she's more than capable of. But it's not just the athletes assessing the risk, it's also the coaches as well, which is a, a bit of extra pressure on your coaches who are used to sort of sitting back and clicking the stopwatch yeah. on measuring. They've got decisions to make as well. As we see the Sparta athlete make her way oh, down wow. the runway. Wow, it's a big jump for Betty Jensen. Well, how close will it be? From this angle, it looks like it could be quite tight. Five metres 65. Oh! <laughs> five metres 65 oh, was man. the mark she needed to better. Five metres 64 is what Jensen has jumped. One centimetre in it between the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete and the Sparta athlete. Wow. How close. It doesn't get much closer than that, does it? 12 points go to AK Skoda Pleasant, 10 points to Sparta, but just one centimeter in it. What were we just saying, Kaja, <laughs> about how exciting yeah. these field events have been? Everything can happen. Everything can happen. Wow, it is incredible to watch. And what a way to close off our long jump competition here. As you can just see, Morgan Squibb worked through your, your screen with her plats and the Blackheath and Bromley kit. She's just making her way down the stands. <laughs> and confirmation of those results and the points dished out. And we go back to the track now for the 400 metre hurdles for the men. Sigurd Clemenson then, your teammate, yeah. going in lane four. He did a personal best yesterday, so uh, he's in good shape. Brilliant form, one to watch. He goes in lane four. He does have one of the faster personal bests in this field. You can see on your screen now the standings after six events. Enka still out in that lead, although the gap is closing slightly. AKs go to Pleasant behind them and then following them, Blackheath and Bromley. It is going to come down to the hunt, as it always does. But I'd expect a very, very tight competition. So let's meet the athletes then for the 400 metre hurdles. Wojtek Schweiner, representing AK Skoda Pleasant. Emran Sifsi of Enke. Well, he has the fastest personal best in this field, 53.07. Uh, Luke Dromfield. In his stronger event, we saw him in the hurdles, the shorter hurdles yesterday and today. He has a personal best of 53.57. And there, the man we mentioned just a moment ago, Sigurd Clemenson, in his Norwegian kit. Personal best set yesterday, so he'll be looking to better that or at least get as close as possible. Sebastian Monterey of Sparta goes in lane three. And Ruben Moreno of Circu the Spanish team in lane two. Well, we've seen in the semi-finals quite a disparity of personal best times just because of the seeding, and this gets a lot closer now. 
And with these conditions as well, while well, eyes will be on the anchor athlete, Emma and Sifsi, with the fastest personal best we've seen, especially in these damp conditions, things don't always go the way of the favourites. Circu in lane two, Sparta in lane three, Oslo and Arcus in four, Blackheath and Bromley in five, Enka in lane six, and AK Skoda Pleasant in seven, and we have had a false start. Hmm. So the athletes will get called back. This is the first false start we've had in the whole of the competition over these two days so far. Well... I can see the officials just reviewing the screens and the data. Well, we'll wait to see what the officials' decision is, what they put the false start down to. It does look like they're looking at reaction times down there. You can see the officials just talking things through at the minute. Oh, what card oh, is going to pull out? Has he got, what card has he got ready? I can see the green card in there. I can see the red card in there. And he's making his way around. Oh, no. Oh, and it is a red card <gasps> for Luke Dromfield of Blackheath and Bromley. Well, that is incredibly disappointing for the British team. He's just getting confirmation as to... Well, he shakes his head. I'm not sure he's happy with the explanation given by the official there. Well, it's a very, very hard one. He was one to watch. Personal best of 53.57. The only one really who off personal best you could see getting close to Emma and Sifsi of Enka. Not only does that obviously Hurt the athlete himself, that also damages the points total. They won't be gaining any points from this event. And when it's so close between Blackheath and Bromley and AK Skoda Pleasant, they're trying to close the gap on Enka, and this really opens the door for Enka to push ahead. So the athletes away. AK Skoda Pleasant in lane seven. Enka in six, empty lane in lane five, Ozo and Arcasus in lane four, Sparta Athletic in three, Circu in lane two. And it is the Enka athlete absolutely powering through at the minute. He's already passed the athlete to the outside of him. Emma and Sifsi. Well, he was always going to be one of the favourites in this race, and he's got an empty lane to the side of him, and it's... He's so far ahead of the athletes now. He's got no one in sight. This is more of a time trial for the Turkish man. The Sparta athlete coming through well behind him as the Turkish man ties up slightly. A late charge from Sparta, but it won't be enough. Emran Sifsi will take the 12 points in a time of... 53.79, so the 12 points off to Enka. And that is very, very disappointing for Blackheath and Bromley. That will hurt the differential and the gap that they have to close down in the hunt. While the result not entirely unexpected, with Enka taking the win, back Heath and Bromley losing out on a decent points haul there. That time, obviously, well within the ability of Luke Dromfield. 
Sebastian Monterey was the athlete who took second place. And we'll get confirmation of third. Confirmation of third. And it was Sigurd Clemenson came through yeah. for third. So good run yeah, really for him good once run. again. No personal best today, but that's not entirely unexpected in these kinds of conditions. As we prepare to head back into the field for the high jump. And Alberto will run us through the structure for the high jump. As you can see on your screen, the results after seven events. We're definitely coming into the business end now. Now it's the turn for one of the most DNA athletic the moment for the most amazing. We're talking about the high jump. We're good just to so each athlete is going to choose the height they are going to try but the other athletes which they are dueling with they don't know what their partner is going to choose so they might play safe they might choose 120 or 130 but the rival might choose a higher height and if they both jump the winner will be the one jumping the higher height so this is one of the most amazing events in the dna competition we start with the long with the high jump So time for the high jump, one of the most exciting parts of this DNA competition. And we have our first head-to-head -head between AK Skoda Pleasant and Enke. The team's battling out at the top of the table at the moment. So Pavel Fronek and Attila Tazdalim are the two athletes who will be battling out in this first head-to-head. -head. So Group A. And Group B, the athletes split into two groups. And we start the game of high jump poker, where the athletes reveal their heights. So they spin it round. So Pavel Fronek will be jumping 1 meter 76. And Attila Tazdalen has gone for 195. Now, we saw Tazdan absolutely dominate this competition yesterday. Personal best of 2 metres 14, so 1 metre 95. Well, <laughs> seems like child's play for him, even <laughs> though for most of the other athletes in this competition, that's something they dream of jumping. Yeah. Pavel Fronek has a personal best of 1 metre 97, a season's best just below that, 1 metre 92. He'll be the first to jump. He's trying to clear 1 metre 76. The athlete with the Czech Republic flag on his arm. And he takes the bar down. So now the advantage falls to Attila Tazalem. As if he didn't already have the advantage of being such a tall figure. Look at the way where he goes back to take his run up. He's <laughs> practically in the in the hammer throw cage. But there's a lot of pressure on the athlete to perform. Having the favorite tag and then being in the spotlight doesn't always go to plan as we saw yesterday. But he takes such a long run up and his stride so much bigger than a lot of the other athletes. And he cruises over. No question about it, really. <laughs> he just absolutely threw, flew over that height. Holds up his bib. Well, I wonder if we'll see him go push the bar up to over two meters at some point. It'll be really good to see him do so. But again, this competition is all about 
the tactics and whether you want to play it safe or whether you want to take the risk as we go to our second duel which features your teammate Kasia, Sondre Yaren. Yes, Sondre. He's a great guy. We were having a bit of a joke yesterday. He's going for the Erling Haaland <laughs> look, isn't he? He's at the breakfast today. Did you? Yeah, so now he's going, he's going by Haaland. I love that. We'll call him Haaland. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, not too much of a difference between them. Sondre going for 1 meter 82, 1 meter 86 for Bulland. I have set my uh, colleagues in the social media team the, the task of trying to get Sondre to do the, uh, the Haaland run oh. that went viral on TikTok and put Der Haaland, the, uh, the German song, over the top of it. They have to ask him, so, he's uh, going, then he's going to do it. I'm sure, I'm sure he will. I saw uh, they put a social media post up yesterday. If, you're, if you don't follow our yeah, social media, just go over yeah, to... Yeah, we, we reposted it at the Norwegian <laughs> Track and Field Instagram. <laughs> go over to Dynamic New Athletics on oh, easy. Instagram and TikTok. Drop us a follow on there as... He cruises over. That's a brilliant start to the competition for the Norwegian. And I did notice under the post, a lot of people were tagging yeah, Alan Holland yeah. under it's the bottom. Yeah, our bomber. teammates. We all was like, okay, we're going to tag Holland to try to get him to see you. Well, he's definitely the closest lookalike that I've seen. I did a double take when I saw him warming up on, on Friday. I saw him from a distance. And yeah. I did think that he should get back to the, the Premier League in England and... Focus on scoring some goals, but here he is cruising over one meter eighty-two in the high jump <laughs> as the Sparta athlete <laughs> steps up. He's gone for the slightly higher height, one meter eighty-six. Whoa! Oh! And the bar goes down, and the risk of the slightly higher height has not paid off. The Norwegian athlete will take all three spikes. A win for Holland. <laughs> A win for Holland, indeed. <laughs> well, you can see Sondre just having a chat over there with his team. Now, he'll have to assess the risk. The Norwegian will have to assess the risk of whether he wants to push the bar a little higher, or whether he's happy to stick. But the points, well, the spikes, which will hopefully lead to then points down the line from a Norwegian point of view, go to Ozo and Arcasus as we are on to our second head-to-head -head in Group A. Well, Tazdalem sticking with 1m95. Carlos Dorado, Osurku going for 165. And when they do these duels and when they, the athletes are forced to stand next to each other, that's really where you see the height difference and the advantage yeah. that Tazdalen, the, the Turkish athlete, has. And you can see why he's so far back when he does his run-up. His stride is so, so, so long wide. Legs. <laughs> he has such a big advantage here. But again, you can't win the competition. It's not an individual competition, is it? It's a team competition, so it's all yeah. about contributing. And of course, as we've mentioned, and as we've just seen in our last head-to-head -head in B, doesn't always go the things the, the way Athi, he sets no. the higher height. Unfortunately not. For the Circu Athi, Dorado cruises over one meter 65. And now the pressure is on Tazdalem. I would love to see Tazdalen take a risk at some point in this competition. Maybe he'll do it in his final head-to-head. -head. I don't know whether he obviously has chosen not to risk it through this group stage, whether he'll do it in the points when it comes down to getting points for his team with Enka so far ahead. Will he push the bar up and try and go over something over a two-metre mark for a bit of a challenge? We'll wait and see as he bounds his way towards the bed. And, of course, he's over 
Smile on his face, arms in the air, holding up the bib again. Well, the anchor team, it seems like there's such good team spirit there. They love in competing for the club. They love in competing for the club on, a, on an international stage. And, yeah, well clear there. Come on, Tazdalyn, take a risk. <laughs> push it, push it on the next one. Would be fun. Spice the competition up a little bit more. Meters. Yeah, let's do it. Let's have it. Well, he's having a, comp uh, a bit of a chat down there with the, with the coach. As we see, Sondra Yaren step back up. He's against Barnaby Corey, who we see for the first time in this competition. Barnaby had some results go his way yesterday. He's gone for 1 meter 65. Sondra has gone for 1 meter 80. But we did see yesterday when Barnaby was jumping, he cleared a lower height and then athletes pushing their own limits against him ended up faulting over higher heights and things fell the way of the Blackheath and Bromley man. And over he goes, Barnaby Corey. Clear. At one meter 65. And now the pressure falls to our Harland lookalike friend. <laughs> who adjusts his Norway race suit. Yeah, we're not a club, we're like from different places. So you've all merged together. There's, there's quite yeah. a few who have done that. Um, the Lazio team made of two different clubs completely. Oh, is, uh, okay. Yaren goes well clear of that. So we're like from five different clubs. Five different clubs yeah. all come together. Oh, in incredible. Oslo and Akershus. But most of us went to school together, so we oh, know each amazing, other. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And it does feel like a lot of the athletes have a lot of personal pride representing not only the club, in this case, the club that you brought together for this event, but also yeah. the country as well. You're in your Norwegian kit, obviously. We see uh, Sondre down there in his Norwegian kit, and a lot of the athletes from this Oslo and Arcus's team are yeah. donning their national kit. So there is that national pride coming out and, yeah. and representing your country here proud. as well. Very proud to get to use the Norwegian clothes. On to our third head-to-head -head in Group A. And they reveal the heights. Pavel Fronek going for 1 meter 76. And Carlos Dorado going three centimetres lower. The Spaniard going for one metre 73. And I suppose if you've earned yourself the right to wear a national kit, yeah. if you've got that kit, you, you don't want to take it off, do you? You want any no. opportunity to wear it. I know if I was... In... Actually, we have been switching our clothes with the other clubs here. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's brilliant We fun. made some uh, British friends yesterday, so now we're, like, switching clothes. Oh, amazing. Like in uh, football after... The match where they yeah. take the tops off. Oh, incredible. Well, so we had like memories from this event. Oh, well, that is so, so good to hear as Pavel Fronek goes clear. Well, that was uh, Carlos Dorado, sorry, goes clear of 1 meter 73. Well, that's so, so brilliant to hear. We saw earlier the, the French team and the Irish team all partying together. Yeah. They hadn't won the competition. It was the Spanish home team that won the, oh. won the B final, but the French and the Irish were partying yeah, so like they'd so won it good. all. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. And the atmosphere has been brilliant, and I'm sure, obviously, we'll let you go in a moment because with the hunt on the way, you want to be in the yeah. infield running around chasing after your teammates. <laughs> Need to vote for my team. Yeah. No, but atmosphere has been fantastic. Also, at the hotel also, everyone is friends. Oh, I love to hear that. So, Pavel Fronek, who went for the slightly higher height, he took the gamble, he has taken the bar down, so it is the Circo athlete, the Spanish athlete, who takes the three spikes there in our final Group A head-to-head. -head. And this is what we're talking about with DNA. It's all a competition of assessing risk, assessing the opportunities to take those risks, whether it's the right time or not. And it wasn't the right time for Pavel Fronek. Mm. 
One more head-to-head -to, -head to go before we go back to the track for the women's 100 metres. So the last duel in this round-robin round. The Danish side versus the Brits. And there you can see on your screen the results so far from these head-to-heads. So Barnaby Corey going for one meter seventy. Sofas Volund going for one meter seventy-eight. So eight centimeters in it. You think they're still within Volund's comfortable zone, personal best of two meters flat. So this well within his capability. Barnaby Corey taking the slightly bigger risk here, although we've seen him go clear at this height multiple times over the course of the weekend. He has a personal best of 1m75 and he starts his approach to the bed and goes well clear. So he'll see that as a good jump, a fist bump and a a handshake from the coach. Now the pressure is on the Danish athlete in the bright blue Sparta vest. He has those incredibly vivid bright yellow or green shoes that absolutely shine. Very hard to miss. The face paint is just about clinging on. Yesterday, the athletes competing with the heat to keep the face paint on. Today, it's been the rain, although things have dried up slightly here. Oh. And he flies over. Sparta Athletic take the three spikes. And that is our group stage of the high jump completed. Kasia, I will let you go yeah, and enjoy the rest of your day. Me. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'll be very, very disappointed if we don't see a TikTok later on with our Harlan lookalike. <laughs> so make sure that yeah, we, the, we get that <laughs> sorted. Can you enjoy the rest of your day as we look back to the track? And you can see on your screen confirmation of the head-to-heads for the final of the men's high jump. And there is the start list for the 100 metre for the women. Well, Faith Akinbeleji goes in lane four. She's one to keep your eyes on. This is a big opportunity for Blackheath and Bromley to make up some points lost. Cecily Farget, a Sparta Athletic, goes in lane two. They've all got temporary tattoos of the badge on their arms. Isabella Andrebo of Oslo and Arcasus goes in in lane three. Lane four, two times under 18 European gold medalists. It's been a long, long season for Faith Akinbeleji, but she is performing so, so well. Personal best of 11.53. Keep your eyes on her in lane four. Simi Ofsifsi made it to the semi-finals of the World Junior Championships last year. She goes in lane five. Victory Yangska, who has seen double up in multiple events over the course of the weekend. She's representing AK Skoda Pleasant. She goes in lane six. And Mar Palazon goes in lane seven, the Spanish athlete on the outside. So all eyes on Faith Akinbeleji, the Black Heath and Bromley athlete, two times European under-18 gold medalist. This is a huge opportunity for Black Heath and Bromley to make back some of those points that they've lost. And if anyone is going to go out there and do it, it will be the woman 
in lane four. She looks so, so focused. Performed exceptionally well yesterday. Well, we appear to be having some technical issues with the gun down at the start. So the athletes just being held for a moment. So a yeah, brilliant performance from Faith Akinbeleji yesterday. Saw her take a new personal best, 11.53, her previous 11.77. And at the end of a very, very long season for this young athlete, She's shown her strength as they finally make their way down onto the blocks. She did have the wind behind her slightly yesterday. The wind has seemed to drop today. No movement in the trees. But what time can the British youngster clock today? Sparta in lane two, Oslo and Arcasus in lane three, Blackheath and Bromley lane four, Enka lane five, Skoda Pleasant lane six and Serku go in lane seven. And it is a brilliant start from the Blackheath and Bromley athlete. She's up very quickly and into her running and she will take the win. She's absolutely destroyed the competition there. Just a little stumble, just a bit further along from the line you can see there. But it's a brilliant run, another incredible run from Faith Akinbeleji. 11.83, Blackheath and Bromley take the 12 points. This was their opportunity to get themselves back into the mix after dropping points earlier on. Yeah, so the win not on her side today, but still an incredible run. Cheers from the crowd. She's up so, so quickly and into her running. And it's really in the last 50 meters where she starts to pull away as soon as she gets into her stride. She's got beautiful form, brilliant to watch behind her. The athlete from AK Skoda Pleasant. Victoria Janska and Enkers Simi of Sifsi picking up the 10 and 8 points behind. So Enka still in the lead, 86 points. They've been dominant from the start. But Skoda Pleasant not letting them pull away too much. 72 points for the Czech team. And then Blackheath and Bromley trailing the leaders by 26 points. So that will be a significant deficit at the moment that they're having to work through in the hunt. But still, three events to go, three point scoring opportunities. And um, we can see Blackheath and Bromley's Barnaby Corey about to reveal his height. So Barnaby Corey, one meter 73. And Pavel Fronek, one meter 61. So the AKs go to Pleasant Athlete in the past. Has struggled with the higher heights. He's played it very, very safe. And Barnaby Corey has pushed his height up. And it will be the AKs go to Pleasant Athlete who jumps first. Well, Pavel Fronek playing things very, very safe there. He has a personal best of 1 meter 97, and he's gone over clear at 1 meter 61. As Barnaby Corey prepares himself. If Barnaby Corey clears this, 
He takes the four points for Blackheath and Bromley. He's taken a bit of a risk here, two centimetres below his personal best. But he's been jumping well, and he goes clear. He gives the bar a little bit of a rattle. Two centimetres behind his personal best. He took a risk, and the risk paid off, and you can see the delight there from himself and the coach. Well, a big result there for Barnaby Corey, and even though this is a fifth-place playoff, it still feels... like it could be a first place. An incredible bit of tactical decisions there between him and his coach. And it has paid off very, very well. So for third place, Sparta versus Circu. And once again, we see a close battle, a close duel here. Bolund of Sparta, the first to step up. One metre eighty one for the man in blue. Just a bit of twitching in the feet, his bright green shoes, and he's into his stride, bounds along, up and over, and Volung goes clear. So that is now the marker and the pressure set. What can Carlos Dorado do to follow? The bar is raised by two centimetres. Has this been another incredible tactical decision in these last head-to-head -head rounds of the high jump? The Spanish man readies himself. Just indicates towards the bar slightly. I think he's slightly concerned about whether it was still secured after being given a bit of a brush. Starts up a clap. The whole stadium get behind him. Into his stride up and oh! He clatters it down. So the risk did not pay off for Carlos Dorado. Sofas Volond and Sparta Athletic take the eight points. Well, we've seen some incredible tactical battles in these field events, and it has been an absolute joy to watch. As we go to our last duel. Of the day. Oslo and Arcasus against Enka for maximum points. 12 points, the maximum that they can take. Oh, just a centimetre between them. The athletes guaranteed at least 10 points. They'll be walking away and back to their teams with. And just one centimetre in it. Sondra Yaren. Choosing to jump 1 metre 96. Attila Tazdalen, 1 metre 97. Well, we know what Tazdalen is capable of. And it's much more than 197. I did wonder whether we would see him push the boundaries a bit and try and get over something around the region of two meters. He's playing it safe. He's playing the game. He's playing the, the DNA game as well as he can. He knows the tactics. He knows that he doesn't have to perform to his best today to get all points, all 12 points for the team. As off goes Sondre Yaren. And the Norwegian just didn't have enough height on it there, did he? And landed middle of his back and took the, bo the, the bar off. So it will be the 10 points you'd imagine for the Norwegian team as 
Attila Tazdalen tracks back again into the pretty much into the hammer throw cage for the start of his exceptionally long run up. He's such a tall figure, the Turkish man. But the pressure is on him now. He's performed pretty much faultlessly throughout the whole competition. As we said, this is well within his ability. Personal best of two meters 14. So this doesn't challenge him too much, but we've seen athletes with a similar distance and personal best disparity take the bar off at less. And no, he's over again. A big leap, arms in the air. Fingers up to the sky, big smile on his face. And the full points once again, all 12 points go to Enka. Wow, they've been so, so dominant. They've been held a little more than they had been in their semi-final. Absolutely soaring. A little bit of a tap there. I hadn't noticed that rattle when he went over to start with. But still, nothing to challenge the Turkish athlete. And there are the results on your screen. From that high jump, 12 points to Enka, 10 points going to Oslo and Arcasus. Blackheath and Bromley in third, 64 points. So 10 points behind AK Skoda Pleasant. But Enka leading the way with 98. So we're reaching the end of this DNA competition and it's uh, quite a lead for the Turkish team Enka right now. But we have two events left and the next one is the javelin. Lucky you, I won't be throwing this. It will be the under 20 girls right there ready to start the next event. This works just like the short put or just like the long jump. We will have this preliminary round of duels and then the two best athletes will fight for 12 points. The two next athletes will fight for eight points and the two final athletes will fight for the four points, the score, the lowest score possible for or two points then we will have the 200 meters and then the final hunt the winner of the hunt will be the winner of this dna under 20 european club competition remember that each and every point that the teams are earning during this competition will be translated into seconds of advantage um, ahead of the rivals so be ready because we're starting the javelin Well, as Alberto explained there, the format for this women's javelin throw, the same as we've had obviously over the course of the past two days, but the same as all field events around so Robin head-to-head -to, -head to start with before point scoring final head-to-head -head round. And it is Petra Sikakova of AK Skoda Pleasant. He'll be the first athlete to throw. Personal best of 55.75. She's the strongest athlete in this field. And she's going up against Peanut Meekings of Blackheath and Bromley. And that is a big, big first throw for the Czech athlete. Well, it was well on its way 
towards 50 meters. I think that's probably landed about 48 or so. We'll wait for confirmation. And that is some marker to lay down this early in the head to head. Forty-seven meters twenty as she goes over and joins the coaching team who are allowed into the field of play for the field events. Peanut Meekings of Blackheath and Bromley then stepping up, personal best of thirty-nine seventy-four. So we're taken absolutely out of this rolled throw to take the spikes. But it is a very, very decent throw for the British youngster. Gives the camera a wave. I'm sure she'll be fairly happy with that as a, a first throw. Absolutely. 38 metres, 61 for Peanut Meekings. She has a season's best of 39.15. So even though she hasn't taken the spikes there, there's definitely encouragement to take from that throw. As we move on to our Group B first head-to-head. -head. Elevin Scar of Oslo and Arcasus laying down the marker for the anchor athlete. Selma Davuku to follow. Elevin Scar has put down a marker of 3493. Davuku though. She has a personal best of 52 metres 96, a season's best of 50 metres 27. One of the strongest athletes in this field. You'd imagine that she'll be in that first place playoff head to head for all 12 points. Just two scoring events left before we reach the hunt. One of the last opportunities for athletes to get the points on the board, and that javelin is absolutely soaring. This is going to be a big, big throw from the anchor athlete. Well, she's well clear of the 40-meter mark, so she will take all three spikes. Confirmed as 44 meters and three. So Enka take the three spikes, and that is a perfect start to the competition for the Enka athlete, who, as I mentioned, we will expect to see in that final head-to-head, -head, pending everything goes the way that she'd like to. And the results on your screen from the head-to-head -head so far. So Peanut Meeking stepping up once again. I think that throw will be just shy of what she threw in her first head-to-head. -head. And I've just been reliably informed by Mika, who I'm sure you've seen on our social medias this weekend, that there has been some form of Erling Haaland related content created with Sondre Yaron. So do make sure you head over to our social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Search Dynamic New Athletics. There's some brilliant content up there already from the course of the weekend.
lokale schaven. With her first throw of this head-to-head -head round, and it looks like it will be quite close between her and the British athlete. The Sparta athlete takes it though, 36 meters 74. Peanut Meekings with 36 13. So the Dane takes the the three spikes there. Selma de Volku back on the runway for her second throw of the competition. And it's another big, big throw for the Turkish athlete. Well, it's not quite hitting the 50 meter line that she's crossed over on multiple occasions. But These are head to head, so it's not always about having the furthest throw in the whole of the competition. She just needs to perform in these head to heads. 44 meters, 27 for the Enkarathi. Paula Mora is up next. She has a personal best of 31.95. So it would take something out of this world to take the three spikes away from Enka. And she's not quite happy with the run up there. The track is slightly, slightly damp still, although it is drying out a huge amount in comparison to the rain we had through the whole of the first final, the B final earlier on today. And that is a, a wide throw for Paula Mora. Javelin just straying over that right hand side, the boundary. So Enka take all three spikes as expected. And we go back to group A for our third and final head to head in group A. So our last round of Group A head-to-heads. Sparta versus Skoda Pleasant. And it is the Sparta athlete who is first to throw. It's a high and looping throw. It comes down around the 35 meter mark, maybe just shy of it. So this is the mark that Petra Sikakova will have to follow. Well, 33-23 is the mark. And the AKs go to Pleasant Elite, sets off down the runway. And it is a big, big throw. Surely that will be the furthest of the competition so far. Well, she has a personal best of 55-75. That was set this season. She won't be near that today in this head-to-head -head round. 48-22.
So it will be 8K Skoda Pleasant against Enker. In that first place playoff, and they're two, the two teams also at the top of the table battling it out. Paula Mora laying down the marker for the Oslo and Arka Susathi to follow. Twenty-eight meters, sixteen for Paula Mora. Melavinska, Yathi in your picture now. Personal best of forty-six fifty-two. She sets off down the runway. This is a mark she's capable of bettering, and she will do. Well over 30 metres there. So Oslo and Arcasus will take their three spikes in the final of our first round head-to-heads. 35 metres 40 for Elevine Skerp. And we'll be back with the javelin throw after our final individual event on the track. As you can see there, how the athletes will be facing off with each other in the final throws of the javelin. We are back to the track for the 200 metres for the men. Real Kwanu then, the one to watch, the Blackheath and Bromley man, another opportunity for Blackheath and Bromley to pick up some much needed points to close down that gap. A four by 100 meter European under 20 champion in 2021. He goes in lane three. But on the outside, Hector Vont, of Sparta Athletic. Juan Carlos Castillo. He joined me on commentary earlier on today. The Circo athlete, he got personal best yesterday. Andres Mika. Good personal best. 21.44, the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete will be one to watch. Orkun Unalan, the Turkish athlete representing Enka, going in lane four. And a big roar there for Jiril Kwanu. He points at the camera. He's got the British backing here in the stands. And Simenberg of Oslo. And Arcasus goes in lane two. But all eyes on lane three. For the athlete who came fifth at the European Juniors, over 100 metres in 2021. He went out to Cali this year, competed in the World Junior Champs over 200 metres. And he has a gold medal in the 4x100 at the European Champs last year in Tallinn. Personal best of 20.40. He goes in lane three. So Oslo and Arcasus in lane two. Blackheath and Bromley lane three. Enker lane four. AK Skoda Pleasant going five. Circu in lane six and Sparta in seven. And it is a brilliant start, as expected, for Guanu, who is absolutely flying round the bend. What a run from him. Already head and shoulders above the rest. He is being pushed, though, on the outside by the Sparta athlete. But in the end, he's the athlete who pulls away. He'll cross the line, 21.44.
Jiril Kwanu, 12 points to Blackheath and Bromley. He's a confident young athlete and he's got the times to back that up. A brilliant result for Blackheath and Bromley. They needed something special and they had the athlete who was going to be able to pull it off in the last of these track events. Andres Mika behind him, the pleasant athlete. And then Hector Vaughn, the Sparta athlete, who at one point looked like he came through quite strong. He just pipped the anchor athlete on the line, actually, Hector Vaughn. But they were all left in the wake of Jarrell Kwanu, who once again has had an incredible run. He's had an incredible competition. And there on your screen, you can see confirmation of the times and the points. So just one more point scoring opportunity. And the points will then be totted up and the difference between the teams will be changed into a point differential. So yeah, there you can see Enka currently leading the way, 104 points. They once again have gone over the 100 point mark. They did it yesterday. They've done it again today. AK Skoda Pleasant with 84, and then Blackheath and Bromley behind them. As we go back to the final round of the javelin throw for the women. Now we'll be starting off with the fifth place head-to-head -head between Peanut Meekins of Blackheath and Bromley and Bola Mora of Circle. Oh, very, very close to the line there, but Paula Mora keeps the javelin in. And that will be the mark. 27 metres, 17, set by the Spanish athlete, and that is what the Brit has to follow. Pinot Meekings on the runway. And it's a very, very high javelin. But it looks like the Brit has probably done enough there to take the four points and fifth place. We'll wait on confirmation of the measurement. 33 meters 14 so more than enough in the end for peanut meekings the brit takes four points back to blackheath and bromley who are looking to close the gap on the teams around them the only issue is in blackheath and bromley's case is the two teams in front of them are the two teams that will be battling it out for the first and second place Elevinska onto the runway for Oslo and Arcasus, the Norwegian. Javelin plants nicely around a similar mark that we saw from Peanut Meekings, I think that something around the 32, maybe 33 meter mark. Ah, wow, where his flags are no throw. Well, that is disappointing for the Norwegian athlete. Oh. So now the advantage falls to Sparta.
Gala Schaaf on the runway. A green flag, a white flag, sorry, I'm looking down at the lights ready for the hunt, a white flag and a throw just shy of 40 meters by the looks of things. She gets a hug from the coach. That will secure the eight points for Sparta, 38 meters, 74. And the third place and eight points go the way of the Danish team. And the two teams at the top of the table in the team standings, the two teams fighting it out for maximum points here in our final event before we go to the hunt. Enka against AK Skoda Pleasant. Well, there hasn't been much between these two athletes throughout the course of the competition so far. And it is the Enka athlete who steps up first. Another big throw. That will be around the 45 meter mark. The Hoku. With a throw of 44.30, Petra Sikova. We'll have to follow that. Has the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete got what it takes? She has indeed a huge throw from Sikova. Just shy of 50 meters, that will secure all 12 points, 42 or 49.20. For Petra Sikakova, who dances around, huge smile on her face. She's very, very happy with that throw. So 12 points go to Skoda, 10 points to Enka. Well, she can go over 50 meters, but she didn't need to today in the end. There are the results from the javelin throw for the women. As we can see, the athletes just in the back of the picture there start to stream into the infield to go and support their teammates in the hunt. We'll take a quick look at the overall point standings as well after 11 events. These are the points that will be translated into time differentials and Enka will have a decent lead. They'll be setting off with quite a big margin already over AK Skoda Pleasant. Behind them, Blackheath and Bromley. And this field will be very spread out by the looks of things. A 2,000 meter mixed medley relay where it is all to play for. So it all comes down to this, to the hunt, to the final event of this fantastic, dynamic, new athletics under 20 European club competition. The club that wins this race will be the European under 20 champion for dynamic new athletics. But this is not your regular medley, really. We have our first leg of 600 meters, a second leg of 400 meters, a third leg of 200 meters, and the fourth and final leg, eight hundred meters. Right now the Turkish team has a lead of approximately um, 18 points and that means that they will have an advantage of six seconds. That's what we're going to do. We're going to translate all those points into seconds of advantage over the rivals in this final hunt. How does this work? Well, there are no guns here. There are no
There is a light. There are no guns, but there is a light. So the athletes will be able to set off until this red light becomes a green light. So this is the end. The winner of the hunt will be the European Under-20 champion. So the explanation there from Alberto of the hunt. 2,000 meter mixed medley relay. Starting off with 600 meters for the women. Followed by 400 meters for the men. 200 meters for the women. And then rounding it off with 800 meters for the men. So just under six seconds is the head start that Enka have over AK Skoda Pleasant. Blackheath and Bromley will be setting off 11.2 seconds behind the leader. Sparta not far behind them, just over a second behind Blackheath and Bromley. Oslo and Arcasus 21.1 seconds behind the leaders. Circu, just seen on your screen. Have a 24.4 second disadvantage to make up. <laughs> Sophia Thorgerson there is exactly who you want to send out to chase down a big gap, a big advantage. Four times national title holder. Blackheath and Bromley go in. Lane three with Zakia Mossi, who did so, so well in the 800 meters yesterday, leading them out. Skoda Pleasant in lane two. And it is Edna Tullum who will be getting things underway for Enka. The light goes green and there's a slight bit of hesitation for the Enka athlete. who's now being pursued by AK Skoda Pleasant. Zakia Mossi gets away. Not far behind her, though, is the athlete in the Sparta vest. But Edna Tullen, well, she's definitely extended the gap after a slight bit of hesitation earlier on. Can anyone close that six second advantage? The athletes in the infield, they're allowed to cheer on their team. You can see them running around. They've got flags, there's drums. And it is the end, Karathi. Edna Tullum with 200 meters left to go in her leg. In the first leg, 600 meters, she'll hand over to Kem Ozus. He'll run 400 meters. And the battle between England and Denmark has just seen Denmark go ahead. Zakia Mossi really trying to fight off the surge of the Sparta athlete who's coming round behind her. But it is Enka who will hand over with the advantage. 400 meters for the men in this second leg. Enka away, a 60-meter lead for the Turkish team, being pursued by the team from the Czech Republic, AK Skoda Pleasant. And this is a good second leg from Michael Heidemeyer, who is absolutely chasing, he's gritting his teeth. You can see he's giving absolutely everything to try and close that gap, and he is closing the gap. Blackheath and Bromley have got ahead once again in the battle between the Brits and the Danes. And the gap has been closed slightly, but it will still be Enka who hand over into this 200 metres in the lead. 200 metres for the women as the 800 metre men start to make their way out onto the track. Big lead for the Turkish team. It has closed slightly but the Czech Republic team just haven't really had what it takes to close the six second gap. That is a huge margin. And Enka handover in the lead. And Barry Drogu is off and away in his 800 meters. Pursued by 
Joe Dahe. So Stefan Tavanek of AK Skoda Pleasant and then Sam Reardon, who has had an excellent season, is in pursuit for Black Heath and Bromley. Now, has Sam been left too much to do? The Black Heath and Bromley athlete is an incredible athlete in his own right, over 800 metres. And he has done enough now to work his way up past the AK Skoda Pleasant athlete. So Blackheath and Bromley into second place. There is probably about a 30 meter lead. Can Sam Ridden chase down the anchor athlete over 400 meters? <coughs> anchor in the lead from Blackheath and Bromley. Well, Sam Reardon went out incredibly quick through his first 400 metres. And you can see Sam being cheered on, his teammates running beside him around the infield. Well, it's hard to see if that gap has closed at all. 100 metres to go almost for the anchor athlete. But Sam Reardon is looming. Will there be time? It doesn't look like there will be as much as... Sam Reardon can give everything. It will be Enka who take the lead. They take the win here. At the European DNA under 20 clubs meet. It's been won by Enka. The Turkish team have been so dominant throughout the course of the weekend. Blackheath and Bromley tried so, so hard. Sam Reardon was put in a brilliant position by his team. And while he was able to close and get past the AK's go to Pleasant athlete, there was just too big a gap to make his way up past Bari Drogu. And Sam Reardon really has given everything. He's bent over taking some deep breaths in at the minute as the Turkish team collect their flag, <laughs> you can see. So, so happy with that win. Reardon goes over and congratulates them. And the Enka team gather around their relay team who are currently taking photos. They've got the team flag, they've got their national flag. And they're all trying to get involved. Well, what a final event of a brilliant two days of competition here out in Spain. <laughs> Cheers, Renka. You take the win. So consistent across so many different disciplines. Over the course of the two days, they stormed away in their semi-final. It looked like they, at one point they might do the same here today. They were slightly challenged by AK Skoda Pleasant and Blackheath and Bromley, but in the end just didn't. Blackheath and Bromley just left themselves slightly too much work to do. And there are the final times for our final event, our deciding event here at the European DNA Under 20 Clubs, a final. Enka with a time of four minutes, 43.53. And what an incredible effort from Blackheath and Bromley to get within two seconds of the team from Turkey after facing a disqualification and the points missed out from that. They've really fought back. And that team for the hunt put them in the best position possible. AK Skoda Pleasant in third. And then Sparta Athletic, Oslo and Arkasus and Surku.
in fourth, fifth and sixth. Now you can see there the athletes all gathered with their teammates. Plenty of opportunities now to take, take some photos. It won't be long till they're all on the podium. And as we saw in the B final earlier on today, the athletes, wherever they came in the final standings, still enjoying themselves. It's been great to see so much positive interaction between the teams, between the different nations. Cassia Ruth talking earlier, saying about how they've been changing and swapping club kit and national kit as well. So they have the memories. They've all been in hotels together over here in Spain. And like we saw earlier with the, the French and the Irish team, they've been making friends and memories and really enjoying themselves regardless of where they're finished in the final standings. But it is Enka who take the win. They'll be lifting the trophy. They'll be on the, the podium. In a few moments. Well, you can see the anchor team there all donning their team tops, collecting another flag, and they've changed their bibs. So they all have their champions bibs on there. Asia Fidinoglu there, who had some brilliant performances over the course of the two days. European junior silver medalist in the 1500 meters. She's been a real asset to this Turkish team. They've currently got the flag back to front, so they're going to have to turn that round. As they wait for the opportunity to get on the stage, take some photos. So some of the highlights there from earlier on in the day. Enka just so consistent throughout their events. 
Racking up plenty of 12 point and maximum point finishes. Then also barely dropping between eight points. And by staying so consistent, they've bagged themselves the win here. That gap in the hunt just proving slightly too, too big to close. Great run from Faith Akinbeleji of Blackheath and Bromley. She did her bit to assist the British club. As did her teammate, Jiriel Kwanu. A dominant win in the 200 meters for the men. And you can see the British team there in their club tops. Donning their new bibs. And waiting for their opportunity to get up on the podium. The anchor team currently up there. And there you can see the team from the Czech Republic, AK Skoda Pleasant, who did so, so well. But in the end, their advantage was eaten up by the Brits, Blackheath and Bromley, who were able to charge them down. And it was Sam Reardon in the 800 metres who cruised past the AK Skoda Pleasant Athy to put Blackheath and Bromley into second place. And there is our podium. Enka on the top. Waves and smiles from the Turkish team who have been the standout performers from the past two days. Blackheath and Bromley, you can see to the left of them. And on the right, AK Skoda Pleasant. All the athletes on the podium playing their part, either through collecting points that then led to that time advantage or disadvantage in the hunt, or whether for the reserve athletes, it was just being there in the infield, cheering them around, supporting the teams, inspiring those bigger performances. Everyone on that podium has played their role. And so it's time for the victory ceremony. And we have some late arriving anchor athletes who just leap their way over the barriers and onto the podium. Let's go to Pleasant, are uh, introduced. And the Vice President of European Athletics goes and shakes the hands of the team and they receive their third place. Medal. 
Big cheers for the Brits, Blackheath and Bromley, who are introduced. They'll receive their trophy from the president of the Spanish Athletics Federation. And Enka have their moment on the top of the podium. They receive their trophy. They've been roaring their club chant over the course of the weekend. And they now get to do so on top of the stage. <laughs> Lifting the trophy up as high as they can. One of the athletes on top of another's shoulder. And off go the streamers and the athletes. All get a moment to enjoy being up there on the top of the podium. Well, they've all found some energy from somewhere still to have a bit of a dance, like we saw with the French team earlier. They get to have their moment, celebrate. Enka starting off most of the dancing. And they get to celebrate as the trophy shoved right in the camera. What a moment for these young athletes traveling out to Spain and enjoying every moment of it. Well, and that concludes all the action over the weekend here at the European DNA Under 20 Clubs. Thank you for joining us over the course of the four sessions. We have seen some absolutely incredible racing and we very much hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Social media queen helping giving this away that the importance of social media to promote this sport in the DNA competition.
So that was all. It's been two amazing days here in Castello. Living this adventure, this new competition, this dynamic new athletics in its first European Under 20 Club competition with all of you, athletes, coaches, fans, judges, um, volunteers, everyone who made this possible. We hope to see you soon in another very special DNA dynamic new athletics competition. Hey! <laughs> 